Howdy and hello everyone, and welcome to 2024, where I'd like to wish you a Merry New Year and a good old Happy Easter. Now, 4th of July was about 6 or 7 months ago at the time of I'm recording this, and Thanksgiving wasn't too far behind. However, that does mean it's getting cold. Pretty cold. So cold that here in San Diego we're getting to 50 degrees in weather that is frigid. But thankfully, we've got a way to deal with this. As SeaWorld Orlando, which is not here in California, but rather somewhere over there, has given us a great ride called Icebreaker about two years ago that doesn't have anything to do with this current situation and automatically makes this joke irrelevant. Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando, the ride that everyone raved about when it first opened, but then proceeded to forget about when it actually existed for a prolonged amount of time. Icebreaker was one of the coasters that unfortunately got stuck up in the whole 2020 kerfundle, where the world did a big oopsie and shut down for two years. This caused Icebreaker to open two years late. Yeah, all of that checks out. Totally. And today I will be going over a brief history as well as my personal thoughts on this amazing ride at SeaWorld Orlando. So let's get started. Icebreaker was one of five main coasters that SeaWorld was getting in 2020. 2020 was meant to be their big year to show off and say we've changed. Granted that year ended up being all pretty much all theme park chains worst performing year, but they at least had the spirit, and Icebreaker was going to be one of the ones that would open right before the pandemic. Same with Iron Gwazi and Emperor and Pantheon. You know, I think pretty much all of them are ready to open right before the pandemic happened, but nope, it just had to happen in March, not April, not May, March. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never get over that. But eventually, in 2019, Icebreaker began construction, and in SeaWorld fashion, it was done in record time. But of course, in also SeaWorld fashion, or correction, modern day SeaWorld fashion, specifically SeaWorld Orlando, they had to choose the most convoluted way ever to announce the ride. And what for some reason became SeaWorld Orlando's trademark thing for announcing new coasters, we got a pre-announcement saying, quote unquote, break the ice 2020. And um, that didn't really help us at all. It just told us that it would be ice themed because it was next to Wild Arctic. What else would they theme it to? But soon enough, Icebreaker would be announced and would be set for a 2020 opening date just like the rest of SeaWorld's coasters. And then the ride got extremely close to opening to the point where they were almost testing and then whoopsie daisies. Yeah, as I said in the beginning of the video, Icebreaker was delayed two years, just like the rest of all of SeaWorld's 2020 editions. In fact, Icebreaker was actually the first to open out of the four that got delayed because Texas Stingray got lucky and opened in February of 2020, so it got to get off the hook. But when it did open, it got some pretty rave reviews. Icebreaker, while yes, it did have the uncomfortable Premier Rides trains with the God Forbidden Comfort Collars, it was still a great ride and was surprisingly packed with airtime. And me over here in San Diego County was itching to get over and ride it. Thankfully, I went to Florida later that year and got to ride it. Only once though, and a ride that I honestly don't really remember and I remember the restraint clamped down on my leg so hard that I was in so much pain that I pretty much forgot it all. 
but thankfully in summer of 2023 I got back to the park and got to get a good few rides on Icebreaker again, thankfully allowing me to, you know, refresh myself. But what also happened in 2023 was the removal of the comfort collars and the indenting of the shin guards, which made the ride so much more comfortable and actually enjoyable for tall people like me. You see this? You see this? No comfort collar. Little divots for your legs. They don't get bashed by this thing. And in general, just a good layout. This is so much better than the Skyrocket 2s with comfort collars. I think you're just sending a Skyrocket 2. Anyway, let's talk about some other things about Icebreaker, like the theming and stuff. The theming is okay, I guess. It's less themed and more stylized, because let's be honest, it's hard to theme a ride about ice breaking than it is to theme a ride to surfing or penguins. So obviously, this ride has some less theming and more stylization, but thankfully, the stylization at least makes the ride look nice. <clears throat> well, I can't really do that anymore because he actually fixed Emperor, but still! Once you get into the station, you may or may not be assigned your row, and chances are you'll be looking at a train leaving the station onto the very, very, very noise transfer track element, and once the next train arrives into the station, you will board your seat. Just make sure you put your legs back, because even though they did put divots in the seats, they can still dig into your shins. But with all that being said, now let's take a look at the actual ride. You start out by exiting the station into the transfer track. You sit for a second as you stare at the butt of the other train sitting in the transfer track unless they're running too. Then you slide to the right onto the main layout. You then sit on the launch track before launching backwards up into a small little bunny hop into the beyond vertical spike. Then you go back down into that same launch track forwards again up into another bunny hop that's slightly stronger this time into the top hat but then you fall back down a third time into a very strong backwards ejector hill and then into that same bunny hop now giving you some quite strong ejector airtime. Then another good pop of ejector into the final launch, the strongest moment of ejector I've felt on a premier rides coaster and then into the top hat. You then go into a rather forceful curve into another ejector hill, another one, then into a nice little turn into another curve, into a little sideways wave turn, then into a few little curves, into another bunny hop, and then into the brake run. That was Icebreaker, and wow, it sure does pack a punch. And there you go, there's Icebreaker. In my opinion, it is a great ride, and it honestly is almost perfect for SeaWorld Orlando as a thrill coaster because it's not a B&M. Like, as I mentioned in my pipeline review, this park is really saturated with B&Ms and that appears to only be getting more. There's just so many B&Ms at this park. It's good to see something that isn't a B&M at this park and sit from your rides. However, Penguin Trek is a very good idea for this park because they, they, have, they have one coaster that is for families and it's a kiddie coaster and trust me, you can only ride Super Grover's Box Car Derby so many times. As I sort of started saying there, Icebreaker is a great ride as a thrill coaster, but it honestly isn't too much of a family coaster. SeaWorld wanted this thing to be a family coaster really badly, so much that they made it a 48 inch height requirement at first, and then they upgraded it to 54 inch height requirement, automatically just not making it a family coaster at all. So I'm glad that Penguin Trek hopefully will give this park something that isn't a thrill coaster, but Penguin Trek is still by B&M, which in my opinion I do not understand, but that's what SeaWorld does, I guess. But with Icebreaker's whole experience, in my opinion, this is a really good ride, and it's kind of unfortunate that everyone's just kind of stopped talking about it, because in my opinion, 
if we could get this instead of the clone Skyrocket 2s, this would be so much better. Like, Electric Eel and Tigris are good, but this is so much better. The airtime is really strong. It isn't too intense, nor is it too boring. It's the perfect mix of everything, and I'm gonna say it again, it's like a Premier Rides version of Manta, just a bit more intense. So, yeah, in my opinion, this is a great ride for SeaWorld Orlando, and is for sure a keeper. But anyway, I think that'll be about it for this pretty short icebreaker review. Now, as I said in the last video, and the video before that, I'm hoping that this video per week upload schedule is doing good for you all, because it's doing very well for me. By the time you're seeing this, I will have already been back to Magic Mountain, and will have ridden Wonder Woman Flight of Courage, hopefully, assuming it doesn't break down a bunch, or it's closed all the time, or it has a really long line because they still haven't made it part of their Flash Pass system. But either way, I will have some, probably, new Magic Mountain reviews coming your way in February. With that being said, I'll be the Coaster Critic, you're the viewer, and I'll see you in the future. Goodbye.